Aloha. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is SBA America, but again, we're focusing on small businesses in Hawaii. Uh, thanks for joining us today. August is proving to be a very, very busy month, and you can see by our panel with us today, we have two guests. That's just how much activity is going on and how much information we have to share with you about small businesses in Hawaii and just how well they're doing, how we can do even better. Um, I'm pleased to have Reg Baker with me. Many of you know Reg. Um, he is a prominent member of our small business community and active with the Chamber. CPA, running his own business, specializing with small business. Uh, Reg also serves on our Region 9 Regulatory Reform Board, helping bring issues that small businesses have to the attention of the SBA and also making sure that your voices are heard. We also are very fortunate to have Yvonne Lee here, who is visiting from our regional office, our Office of Advocacy in San Francisco. She has some very special meetings planned and some different things to tell you about that SBA's Office of Advocacy is doing here for businesses across the country and for businesses, small businesses here in Hawaii. We're lucky she's going to be able to visit twice this month because so much is going on. Um, some of the important things that we're seeing happen, uh, even this week, we've got a special activity that's a, a partnership of SBA and AARP. It's called, it's part of our Summer of Mentoring, and it's called Encore Entrepreneur, Your Next Best Adventure. And that is for people who are looking or have started a business venture here in Hawaii, um, and they're a baby boomer. Maybe it's their second career. This is happening on Saturday, or maybe just people maybe haven't started yet. Maybe you're just thinking about, should I take my hobby or my interest and make a business out of it? So this program is to help you do just that or explore the possibilities. It'll be this Saturday from 9.30 to 11.30 and it will be at Ward Warehouse on the second floor in the Kaka'ako room. You'll hear from people who have done exactly that, you know, retired from a, a early uh, career, started a small business and been very, very successful. What did they face? How did they make the change? And what it, where are they going from that point on? So this is on Saturday, August 13th. You can call our office at 541-2990 or contact AARP to get more information or register. But this group is a fast-growing group, one of the faster segments, and they've added about 23% about growth in this demographic over the last several years. So we can help those businesses get your idea on paper, figure out which way to go, um, and help you launch your business with the skills that you've earned in, or learned and gained in your first career. Um, we also have an event going on this week on August 11th, and this is with our Chamber of Commerce and discussing small business financing. Where do you find money? Really important question. And Reg, I know you're involved with that. Maybe you want to tell us a little bit about what you expect to um, go on with sure, the Chamber of Commerce. Sure, I'd be happy event. to. Um, I'm the chair of the Small Business and Entrepreneurial Committee of the Chamber of Commerce, and this is uh, an event uh, that we do maybe every other month, you know, mm -hmm. uh, once every two months. Uh, and this is on August 11th. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is going to be about uh, you know focusing on the financing piece of, of what small businesses need to have. So we're going to have Central Pacific Bank out there. We're going to have Hawaii National Bank out there. Um, we're also you know going to be talking a little bit with the SBA. They're going to have some information, uh, all about obtaining the capital and the resource, the financial resources you need in order to either start the business or take the business to the next level. Right. You know, and that's usually one of the bigger challenges that most small businesses experience is that access to capital. Mm -hmm. Access to capital. Where to find the money? How do I get money? Where's my credit? I mean, there, it's a complicated but critically important question for small business. So I'm glad you're going to be doing that, and we'll be happy to support that. Um, most people know that financing is one of SBA's most important programs, and it is the lifeblood of small business. So we need to make sure that small businesses know what they need to do, where to find it. And so I'm glad you'll be offering. What time is this? Um, uh, this is going to be in the morning on August 11th. That's a Thursday. Uh, it's going to start registrations at 8 o'clock, and then about 8.30, we'll kick the program off. And uh -huh. uh, then for about an hour, we're going to have a, a series of speakers come out and talk about how, you know, what their process, what their procedures are, and how to get money, mm -hmm. uh, and what the SBA's role in 
all of this. I okay. Mean, the SBA is not necessarily a lender, but they mm -hmm. are active in securing that funding in different ways. Yeah, that's. A, I I really lo always liked writing those big checks. No, <laughs> <laughs> SBA isn't a lender, but we do guarantee a lot of loans, right. and we have funds available to lend this year and a lot of different programs. So I think it would be great and very interesting for people to hear how we can make that happen right. for small businesses. And I just wanted to mention, you know, this mm -hmm. encore uh, entrepreneurship that you're, mm -hmm. you're going to have on August 13th. Um, it's, it's amazing to me how many people that normally would be retiring in their 60s mm -hmm. are actually showing up for these events and trying to find out exactly how to have a business mm -hmm. and start a business. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But mm -hmm. today, people are living for another 20, 25 years, and they, they want something to do. And right. this is an exciting time for them to mm -hmm. try out something mm -hmm. that they've been thinking about. And some of them are interested in supplementing a retirement income or creating yeah. a legacy or some idea that they've had and want to start with their families, mm -hmm. for example, and maybe nobody's had the time or the availability to do it and now's the opportunity yeah. we're also seeing a lot of people that will start kind of a socially conscious venture mm -hmm. they want to be able to give back yeah. and a lot of those companies as small businesses are finding a lot of success so we hope mm -hmm. some of you will come out and join us for this activity even if you're just exploring the idea uh, or the concept should I do this mm -hmm. should I take mm -hmm. my hobby like jewelry making or cupcake mm -hmm. making or mm -hmm. you know all of these things yeah. that people do consulting graphics yeah. There's yeah. so many opportunities, and we are seeing a lot of people succeed in that area. Mm -hmm. um, so please come down and join us and uh, learn a little bit more, whether you're in business and looking to grow or it's time to, you know, just mm -hmm. get started with that idea. Um, there's also a Small Business Growth Expo going on on, on Thursday, so uh, it's hosted by PBN. SBA will be there again to talk about our entire range of programs. So it will be down at the Convention Center. You can check out at PBN's uh, uh, website uh, to learn more information. There'll be some free seminars and other activities. Uh, be, expect over 90 vendors and 600 small business people. So um, it could be a great opportunity to learn more about finding customers or meeting other people in your industry as well. So we encourage you, know, you to the, the, the get The attendance that. at this is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll have literally hundreds of people going through there and the energy in the room is just over the top. I mean, there's a lot of very motivated, enthusiastic people there. It's mm -hmm. a great place to meet folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think that's what we want to talk about with this program too, are the resources and networking and connections you can make through some of these small business activities. Mm -hmm. you know, um, we also have an important meeting we were all involved in discussing mm -hmm. this morning, Yvonne as well, because we have a, a regulatory reform hearing that will be happening here in Hawaii later this month, mm -hmm. and that will be coming up on August 23rd. Um, Yvonne, as I said, as our um, regional advocate is involved in this effort, we'll have folks from Washington, D.C., our, our National Ombudsman Office, and of course, Reg is a member of our regulatory reform board, is helping us frame up the issues that are important to small businesses in Hawaii and need some attention on the national landscape as well. So um, we talked about a little bit about our agenda and ideas this morning, so maybe you'd kind of like to... Weigh sure. in and, no, and mention that. Yolanda, you want to take a, a crack at that first? Or? No, yeah. well, since you are the board member of okay. Vision Nine, so um, go ahead and I'll add on. Maybe tell them a little bit about what your role is sure. as well. well yeah. I'm a member of the National Board for Regulatory Reform for the Small Business Administration. I'm the chair of the Ninth Region, which is the Western United States. Uh, and part of what we're doing is trying to solicit companies to come in and share with us some of the challenges that they may be having with some rules and regulations you know, mm -hmm. at the federal level that maybe we can help them with. Mm -hmm. you know? And you know, it, the process you, is very maybe, simple. Um, Give us a couple of examples of what kind well, of issues we might one, be discussing. One of the areas that we have a lot of success with is that in the federal contracting area, if if some of the, the companies or the agencies within the federal government are a little bit slow in paying or there's a little hiccup in there, um, you know, that, that they're preventing a payment to, to be made, um, we can help with that. And, mm -hmm. and we've helped collect millions of dollars across the country uh, in expediting uh, the collection process. And so, you know, sometimes, you know, stuff happens mm -hmm. and sometimes they need a little bit of help. And, you know, we've got direct access to the folks in D.C. Mm -hmm. You know, our administrator at the SBA sits on the president's cabinet. Mm -hmm. And so we, we've got some pretty high level visibility and we can get things done. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is a chance for people to come and talk about some of the issues they may be facing or it could be labor issues, it could be uh, mm -hmm. labor employment, it could be payment, it could be government contracting, it could be access to capital issues as well, just about anything yeah, that the, deals with federal exactly, agency or government. Yeah, the overtime rules. Uh, overtime you know, rules that are issue, coming up. You know, uh, I think this morning you had mentioned that maybe health care mm -hmm. might be um, something that people are still concerned with. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, my office is the Office of Advocacy, which was mm -hmm. created by Congress about 40 years ago, specifically as an independent entity within SBA to represent the interests of small business within federal government. So our job as uh, regional advocates is to bring back what we hear from the ground, the mm -hmm. small businesses, their concerns, the three Bs. What are the barriers that's keeping them from uh, opening or expanding the business? What are the best practices? Mm -hmm. Are there rules that help them? Or despite rules and regulations, <laughs> they continue to excel. And what are the big ideas? Because the folks who really know how to grow the U.S. economy are the small businesses. Mm -hmm. So our job is not to speak for them. Our job is to amplify what we hear, their voices, back to Washington, uh, before the administration, before Congress, and most importantly, work with federal agencies as they put together these regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, my purpose of coming to DC, <laughs> to Hawaii um, this week is to uh, participate in a couple of very important roundtable discussions with Hawaii small business stakeholders. Earlier today, Reg and I were involved with a uh, meeting hosted by the Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. Uh, bringing together food uh, small businesses to talk about the uh, updates on the new law, the FISMA law, which mm -hmm. is f uh, Food Safety and Modernization Act, which is a five-year-old law, mm -hmm. first time uh, uh, in about 50 years that we have a public health and safety uh, regulation and law that was mm -hmm. uh, enacted. The purpose is to really keep uh, consumers um, with safe food products, import and, and um, export products, and more importantly, to really have the ability to trace back the food mm. uh, from mm -hmm. the farmers to the processor, from the manufacturer, from the tra uh, folks who transport things, and to the um, stores and to the restaurants mm -hmm. that the consumer will consume those products. So the idea of FISMA is to keep America consumers safe from foodborne uh, um, um, uh, uh, activities, mm -hmm. but more importantly to really help uh, food-related businesses mm -hmm. to um, keep the business growing because if we have safe products, then the, the, the businesses will do much better. People mm -hmm. will have more confidence in them. So that was our first round table earlier mm -hmm. today. It was a really robust uh, discussion that we had with the community. Mm -hmm. And since we do have groups for food manufacturers associations mm -hmm. and, and um, we're looking at developing diversified agriculture and value-added products. What kind of things did you hear this morning? What is the response that you might be getting from, well, I, I from think, our local folks? I think the one thing that I will bring back to Washington is that um, the businesses, because we have over 2,000 mm -hmm. food-related businesses in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and they're all small businesses. So the key that they want me to bring back is that they need more information. Any time when Washington put together new laws or regulations, they need to be connected. They need to know what it is so that they can prepare mm -hmm. to uh, comply with those rules. And uh, sometimes it takes more than just um, you know, hiring the staff, they need to really look at their mm -hmm. operation to really comply. And our job as advocacy is at the front end when the regulations are being proposed to make sure that their experience and their voice will be included mm -hmm. so that they can say, this doesn't work because. Um, we talked about why regulations sometimes are not business friendly mm -hmm. because um, oftentimes people say we don't like regulations, too uh -huh. much regulations. 
because most of the folks who drafted these rules and regulations, they themselves have never run a business. Right. Mm -hmm. So they would know it, it sounds good and it looks good on paper, but when it's being practiced, it may not work. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so important for the small business uh, owners and mm -hmm. the stakeholders to tell us yeah. why it would work, why it won't work, and more importantly, their recommendations, how to make it work, mm -hmm. so that it meets the spirit of the regulations, but more importantly, it keeps the small business growing mm -hmm. and not to hinder their, yeah. their So it's almost operations. like re reverse engineering to get back to the good intention of what a regulation was. Right. So right. what I think we'll do, we'll love to hear about yeah. some of your other activities. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break, but then we'll be back with you on SBA America, focusing on Hawaii and talking more about how our Office of Advocacy can help small businesses succeed. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. Aloha. I'm State Senator Russell Ruderman. I represent the Puna and Ka'u District on the Big Island and the host of Ruderman Roundtable. We're here on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. You can join us at thinktechhawaii.com. You can find a link there to uh, to a page where you can see past episodes. And we talk here about good government, environmental issues, and issues of the day facing the state of Hawaii. I'm Russell Ruderman. Please join us for the Ruderman Roundtable. Mahalo. Hi there. We're continuing again our discussion with uh, Yvonne Lee from SBA's Office of Advocacy and Reg Baker, our favorite local CPA and member of our regulatory reform board. We've been talking about some of the activities that will be happening while our regional advocate is here. Um, SBA's Office of Advocacy is an independent voice for small business and just wanted to kind of revisit this a little bit because a lot of people are like, why are they separate or what do they do? But the Office of Advocacy does remain independent, but they're aligned very closely with um, SBA and the interests of small businesses. It can sometimes sound pretty dull and boring, you know, particularly maybe you go to their website and you look at you know regulatory reform and some of these things. But the place, of the website, and the, what the office does, rich in research and economic statistics, mm -hmm. a lot of data that's very, very helpful for small business. So some of these hearings that are going on or roundtables mm -hmm. that are happening mm -hmm. this week are very, very informative in a number of different industries. Mm -hmm. So this morning was looking at FISMA and mm -hmm. food production mm -hmm. and small businesses dealing mm -hmm. with value-added foods, mm -hmm. et cetera, here in Hawaii. Tell us a little bit more about what went on and some of the mm -hmm. interests or comments that you got from small businesses. You know? Well, I want to emphasize the, the key independence because small business often felt that they don't have a voice in Washington when decisions are make, being made, policies, regulations, and laws. Mm -hmm. My office really emphasized the importance of independence. Even though we work very closely with SBA, we are part of SBA. Mm -hmm. The reason why we're independent entity is SBA also promulgate rules, such as the size standards, mm -hmm. such as other things, like the, the loan package and everything else. So we want to make sure that the small business community knows that we serve the small business. We do not serve other federal governments. So when size standards come, even though we are brothers and sisters with SBA, we continue to say, these are the things that we hear. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, we want the small business community to know that we are amplifying their voice. We do not want to convince them of what is happening. We want them to convince the, the um, decision makers what their needs are mm -hmm. to grow and start and the start business. So in addition to the uh, FISMA rule mm -hmm. that is really going to impact Hawaii's business, uh, we also recognize that in Hawaii there's a really growing innovative technology movement mm -hmm. here. The ecosystem is really growing really fast and we are here uh, Thursday to attend an innovation showcase that is co-hosted by the University of Hawaii as well as Senator Hirono mm -hmm. for the purpose of bringing together um, innovation technology entrepreneurs to talk about Hawaii's ecosystem. What make it work and what can the federal government do to really help build 
the system not only for the current entrepreneurs but to grow mm -hmm. uh, future startups and future entrepreneurs to make the Hawaii a uh, uh, really innovative technology center. Mm -hmm. I think yes. it, probably at the meeting you're going to hear a lot of things about yeah. what is happening here and I think most people are generally mm -hmm. surprised, amazed and mm -hmm. you know we're looking at how do we continue to build that and nurture that along as well. Right. So you'll be, where is that? Where is it happening at UH? Is it's it going to be at the iLab. Mm -hmm. The new the, iLab? The new iLab. I'm looking forward to visit it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be at the um, uh, Manoa mm -hmm. campus. Right. So it's going to be mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock. Um, is it open nine, to? 9 to 11. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it open to anybody, or you have to pre-register, or is it's it open, open to the public? Uh -huh. And we welcome everyone to come because this is a great opportunity for us to learn mm -hmm. from their experience. Again, to learn from the three Bs. Mm -hmm. Great, great. I guess mm -hmm. if somebody wanted more information, um, is it best to they can contact my office if that's. Mm -hmm. I know we have right. some information about it, but right. if they if they wanted to call in your contact. Um, right. Have you been up there, Reg? Have you seen no, it yet? No, I have yet? not. You know, no, so. I, I've been to the Innovation Center a number of times, but mm -hmm. I haven't been to the new iLab. Mm -hmm. That sounds exciting. Sounds exciting, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the topics that you're looking at uh, exploring um, with that session? Maybe you can tell okay. us a little more. Well, in addition to the Office of Advocacy, um, we will also have the Regional Director for the U.S. Pen and Trade Office. Mm -hmm. As many of you know, um, the uh, USPTO had created four satellite offices mm -hmm. to ease the, the burden of um, applicants mm -hmm. for um, patents and trade. So the Silicon Valley office was opened a couple of years ago. That would really help folks in the West Coast. Instead of having to go to Washington, D.C.'s office, they can just hop on the plane, go to Silicon Valley, and meet with the examiners because, mm -hmm. as we all know, uh, patents drives technology mm -hmm. and it really helps entrepreneurs and startups to really secure the necessary investments, uh, mm -hmm. capital investments. So the purpose of the showcase is also to share information of what the government has to offer to really help not only startups but established businesses to make sure that they have an easier path mm -hmm. to uh, secure the business, protect the business, and expand the business. Mm -hmm. Does the experience or, or um, the results show that those four offices are making a difference for, I mean, I can definitely understand, let's yeah. get rid of the bottleneck. Mm -hmm. um, having experienced been a bottleneck myself, <laughs> but, um, you know, just to see the experience is that they're, they're helping and it's, it's encouraging more people to get in and turn around patents? It really has helped within mm -hmm. the last couple of years looking at how the Silicon Valley office has really helped not just the California applicants, but mm -hmm. people can really, they feel much easier. Like for Hawaii, it's a six hour difference to mm -hmm. call for any kind of information. Mm -hmm. So right now, you can either hop a plane or you can just call with a three hour or sometimes two hour difference. Mm -hmm. The information is readily there. So people don't need to waste time or, or sweat out what mm -hmm. could happen and I need this information right away. So the fact that these are more um, entrepreneur friendly mm -hmm. and, and it's response to what the entrepreneurs are telling us, that especially in the technology field, time is money. Mm -hmm. They cannot waste time to wait for answers. So mm -hmm. by having these, uh, the satellite offices, uh, in Denver, in Dallas, Detroit, and uh, Silicon Valley. It really helps the entrepreneurs to get the information right away, get the support, get the service, mm -hmm. and as a, re uh, as a result, their patent applications will be done more uh, proficiently, mm -hmm. and they can get the answers uh, um, sooner, mm -hmm. and thereby they can attract their uh, investors much easier. Yeah, and mm -hmm. that's an important part of the access to capital is to make sure that if people are investing in these mm -hmm. companies that the intellectual property that they mm -hmm. have that they're trying to monetize mm -hmm. is yeah. protected. Right. Mm -hmm. And in the, the uh, innovation mm -hmm. sector, these things move very quickly. Yeah. 
And mm -hmm. so having multiple patents in a series to protect intellectual property rights is not uncommon. Mm -hmm. And so the faster you can get this yeah. turnaround, the better. And yeah. it's, it's perfect. It's really what they needed. Right. Because under the new American Investment Act, um, one of the major changes is instead of the first to invent, now it's the first to file. Mm. So time is really of the essence, mm -hmm. especially for folks in the biotech, high tech, clean tech um, mm -hmm. uh, sectors. Yeah. So we it, hope that people can come and learn more about the Yeah, it sounds like the awareness sector. then becomes, yeah. and, and knowledge yeah. of the process mm -hmm. becomes mm -hmm. critically important right. as well. Because right. we know sometimes some solutions or processes are yeah. developed yeah. in different areas almost right. simultaneously. Right. You know, so right. they need to be. It, it wouldn't yeah. be an overstatement to say that in some respects there is a race going on to mm -hmm. who's <laughs> going to file the <laughs> patent and get it first. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it is a fast moving industry and they need to expedite the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we are, we are seeing that happen um, across the country mm -hmm. and probably around the world as yeah. well. So, yeah. yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've got STEM you were looking at, innovation, mm -hmm. other topics that are going to come up at UH or some of your other meetings. Maybe you can uh, tell us some of your other, mm -hmm. other research or ideas okay. that are going on with the Office of Advocacy. Well, besides our regulatory and, and policy work, we also have an mm -hmm. econo uh, economic research team. Their job is to produce uh, reports and data collection to really inform the legislative uh, leaders as well as the public of the state of the U.S. economy. Where are we heading? Where are some of the opportunities? And what can we do together, private and public sector, to mm -hmm. get to the, that um, uh, happy place? Right. So uh, we have issued several issues brief on trade because Hawaii is the closest, uh, next to Guam, mm -hmm. is the closest um, U.S. state mm -hmm. to a huge uh, mm -hmm. um, consumer market mm -hmm. uh, in Asia. So uh, we have issued a report, uh, issues brief on small business role in international trade. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we welcome folks to visit our website to look at our products and we also welcome you to give us feedback. Mm -hmm. because so we can go to the, report. or anybody who's interested can research some of the different topics. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. there's uh, information on women-owned small business, veterans yeah. business, yeah. the state of economics yeah. in any one of yeah. the 50 states. Yeah. Um, but what are in some of the other topics, uh, different kind of data that you mine and, I mean, you fund a lot of research right. too right. to see where, where the trends are, innovation or right. how Sometimes rules and regulations are actually right. working out. Right. Well, because there's so much attention on diversity in STEM, so we've been putting together a report on gender gaps in STEM, immigrants in STEM, because the, uh, both in Hawaii and uh, most part of my region, mm -hmm. um, there is a um, growing population mm -hmm. of um, immigrant entrepreneurs who are in STEM fields. And so we put together the report on where they are and okay. how they have contributed to the U.S. Oh, economy wow. and how we can all help uh, them grow. Wow. So, and so to kind of wrap up our conversation, if somebody is interested in looking, where do they go to find your website? They go and to SBA because we're part of the SBA family. Right. SBA.advocacy. Okay. And then they can go to a whole bunch of our research, our comment letters. Uh, mm -hmm. We make comments on a lot of regulations. They are welcome to review them. And again, the key is we need to hear from the small business community. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, if the voice is not being heard, then decisions are made without the input. Mm -hmm. And that would not be a good thing. So there's a, another good reason to look to SBA Office of Advocacy to help you with your business, to even find some of that market research data that you may need to support a proposal, to support your idea, to convince your spouse that you are going to take your innovation commercial, <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, we thank you for joining yeah. us today. We wish you well with your trip. Thank you and so thanks much, for uh, being helping us be the voice of small business. So, thank you. Aloha. Thanks for being here. Thank you. My pleasure.